Hi everyone, welcome to Mains Maxima program. So the aim of this Mains Maxima program is to amplify the underlying potential of the UPSC aspirants who are preparing for Mains examination and also help them to you know maximize the marks with reference to the Mains UPSC Mains examination. So in this program, Mains Maxima program, I'll be discussing a set of questions exclusively with reference to economy, and I hope it will really help you guys in preparing for your Mains examination in a much much better way. So to begin with. The first topic of discussion today is with reference to inequality. So the question is, inequality dampens investment and hence growth by fueling economic, financial and political instability. Examine this statement in the light of increasing income inequality in India. So now we are going to examine this particular statement guys that is with reference to inequality in different sectors of the economy. Okay. So to begin with, we know that inequality has been literally affecting our economy to, in a greater way, right? Be it in any sectors. If you take any sector, the widening disparities in the income and distribution of in, uh, income and distribution has literally led to a lot of problems, right? So you can start your answer by giving an introduction, guys. See, we know that social and economic inequalities, okay, that has literally existed in India from the ancient times in various forms like your social status, your wealth or opportunity between people or groups. And if you see the recent report titled Widening Gaps, that is India Inequality Repo Report of 2018, which is released by the Oxfam India, it shows the sign of chronic capitalism in India, which is a very serious situation or a dangerous situation for our country. Okay. And now, if you see the wealth of India's billionaires, guys, it was 10% of your gross domestic product in the year 2013. And it has subsequently increased rapidly to about 15% currently. That means there has been a huge increase, right? So now, that itself shows that there is a widening inequality between the rich and the poor. And that again is one of the biggest reasons or causes why a country is not developing. Okay. And now, according to the question, it is asking you about why is there inequality in the different sectors. So next part of your answer, you can directly start with why is there inequality in different sectors. Okay. So now we'll be discussing about the inequality that exists in different sectors. So here we are going to discuss about the inequality in your agriculture or primary sector, then about your secondary or manufacturing sector and also in your tertiary or service sector. Because why does this inequality arise guys? because of unemployment right and now we are going to see how is that inequality affecting different sectors talking about the agriculture sector you can see that the agriculture productivity it remains low at 15 percent of gdp and we know that the majority of population still depends upon agriculture so it literally employs 50 percent of population okay but though there is a 50 percentage of population depending on agriculture also what is its contribution to gdp it's just 15 percent which is very low and that shows that the rate of unemployment is too high again there exists inequality right because those people again won't have employment they'll suffer a lot they come to the poorer sections of society moving on to your uh, secondary or your manufacturing sector guys they struggled with global competition and the growth in the manufacturing sector has literally been stagnant i can tell you leading to a lot of loss in the creation of jobs so that again you know has affected the growth of economy Talking about the third sector, that is service sector. You know, the contribution of service sector to GDP, guys, it is 70%. But it has created only less than 30% of employ uh, employment opportunities. Which means that, though the GDP contribution is too high also, what about the employment thing, guys? That's 30%. And another important factor with reference to the service sector is that, that sector consists of exclusively highly skilled and skilled people. Right? So now... From this, what do you understand? There exists a huge inequality in all these sectors which totally affects the you know, ec economic development of the country as a whole. This mismatch, guys, between these sectors, as I told you, has literally affected the all-round development of the country. So you can talk about the various sectors just like this. And now directly, we are now going to talk about the economic instability, or about the political instability, and also about the regional uh, you know, disparity. All this has literally led to inequality, right? We are going to see how that has happened, okay? So moving up, talking about the regional differences. How has that led to inequalities, guys? So we know that there exists a lot of regional disparities within the states, right? And also between the states, which ultimately leads to what, guys? The inequality. And that again hampers your development. So this, uh, talking about regional differences, the excess inequality, guys, between different states in terms of your geographical resources and government revenues. That is literally factory the cost of living and standard of living, especially in cities, which has seen a downward trend due to this. Because when there exists inequality, what happens, guys? We do have 
a set of people who are belong to upper category a set of people who are belong to the lower category also right so when there is a regional disparity when the standard of living increases or for example when the cost of living increases it becomes very difficult for the poorer section of people to purchase even the essential commodities again what happens in that area there arises a regional disparity then talking about the industrial development guys we can see that in our india itself within uh, you know between the states only certain states are highly developed with respect to industrial aspects right though certain other states have the potential to develop also why they not develop guys because there is not much of development in those states the government is not ready to spend on those states right if you want to develop an industry in one particular state then you also need to make sure that certain infrastructure development is also done they are not willing to do that as a result of which constantly only some particular states are getting improved whereas the other states are lagging behind so again what happens there exists regional disparities guys which is very very bad for the development of the country because when there is a regional disparity or when one particular region is not developed what happens there will be no employment opportunities for people living in that particular area as a result of which what happens to your standard of living it decreases what happens to the contribution to gdp that again decreases only uh, see india means it's not only really some states right it is a combination of so many states everything has to go balance right all simultaneously hand in hand but here we could see it's a graph is like an upward trend for some and a downward trend downward trend for another so there exists a huge regional differences and that is one of the most important reasons for inequality guys and that is again uh, an important reason for poverty also okay moving on to the next one let us see how has political instability led to this inequality guys see the weak policy formulation and also you know certain excess populist welfare policies like your subsidies and loan waivers that has literally affected the financial growth of our country guys and also we don't have good labor reforms here though we have lot of rules and regulations we have lot of reform policies protecting the interest of uh, laborers or employees also it is not effective or uh, it is not monitored or checked thoroughly i can tell you so now when there is a lack of labor reforms what happens automatically it will affect your productivity and that too especially in the informal sector and we know that majority of population they are employed in which sector your informal sector as a result of which again there exists a lot of inequality on the whole the stability of economy is shaken okay when there are inequalities guys due to policies like liberalization privatization and deregulation that has also affected uh, uh, you know your economic instability because we know that in case of privatization also there exists a lot of inequalities right within that particular sector so now what happens all these uh, you know the lpg reforms which was introduced by the government in 1990 that was literally for the development of the country as a whole yes it has led to a development i i do i never say it has not but it has also widened the gap guys in uh, you know as as and when uh, when they were trying to reduce poverty also it is literally enhanced the uh, you know widening disparity i can tell you that literally contradicts but that has really happened so again all these things is literally led to a inequality in our country so now again we are going to talk about the technological aspects guys the technological inequality okay now we know that the lack of adequate technology and skills that has again affected the two main sectors of our economy one is your service sector another is the manufacturing or industrial sector and apart from that guys though we have certain technologies also there is a inflexibility in them that is the inflexibility of various sectors uh, you know to new technologies like your big data your ai that is artificial intelligence that has again led to you know lot of inequalities because now we will not be knowing what is the you know effect of this inflexibility to this new technologies but in the coming future generations if these new technologies are not properly utilized that is like your big data and artificial intelligence definitely our country will be at a stake because if you see right now itself we can see so many countries uh, you know coming up with artificial intelligence where they can improve their progress in development to a greater extent so why not india too if that is not there again in terms of technology also we face a lot of inequalities and this will be continuing for us which is which will definitely hamper the growth and development of our country so you can include points like that also guys okay and thus now now you, you can uh, you, i think we have discussed uh, the major points and now it's time for conclusion so how will you conclude guys in order to reduce this income inequality especially with reference to india you know we face this income inequality right what you should do guys you have to increase the spending in various social sectors like your education your health your skill development etc and out of these your skill development is very very essential because there is the existence of heavy unemployment in our country right and that is one of the biggest problem that our country is facing so if the people are trained under certain programs initiated by the government like the skill india program which was launched in 2015 
as per the program it is basically train the youth or to skill them so that they'll be having some sort of employment even if they are not employed in any organization also they can you know set up their own enterprises a kind of entrepreneurship or self employment can be generated at the end of the day they are having some sort of income for them to live whereby it like in uh, you know benefit the development of our country so now lot of reforms guys another important solution that you can write in your conclusion is lot of reforms or changes can take place with reference to your taxation we know that we have both direct and indirect taxation out of that the tax collection from indirect sources too high because we are not feeling the pinch or the burden of paying it right because it is included in the uh, you know commodity when you are bu buying it but what about direct tax the, there is a lower you know the tax collection of direct tax is literally low as a result of which it literally hamper your economy and also making sure that the process of uh, you know this direct tax collection can be simplified so that it will en enable the people to you know make the payment of direct tax in a better way fine and also apart from that guys labor reforms because that is something which i already discussed to you a lot of inequality exists right so now a lot of labor reforms can also take place as it is very necessary to restore country's financial health so thus there is a need to end the nexus between the political and the economic elites which has resulted in the monopoly which means the concentration of economic power in the hands of few because that is little little inequality right because of this only you know we are facing a lot of issues thus in order to bring back the 21% of india's population from bpl that is the below poverty line and achieve the sdg there is a urgent need to end the different forms of inequality in india because unless and until we are going to end this different forms of inequality guys we cannot even think of developing in our country so this is how you should approach this particular question and apart from these points what we have discussed you can also add your own points also because at the end of the day inequality is a wider concept so you will be able to add up a lot of points from your own perspective so i hope these points have literally helped you in framing your answers so the next question is India has a larger demographic dividend which has to be harnessed through skill india analyze so here from this question we have understood that we are not able to utilize the demographic dividend that we have Demo demographic dividend means the young population that india has which means that we are lacking with lot of skill development activities right so this question is all about harnessing the demographic dividend that india has through various skill development initiatives and programs so to begin with you can write your answer by fo uh, by focusing on the demographic dividend of india okay we know that india is one of the youngest country in the world with an average of 29 years compared to you know the world standard that is like china with 37 and japan with 48 so now guys with having such a young you know efficient population automatically you know uh, the demographic dividend is so high and the skill development supposed to be high because a young population can definitely be accustomed to, to that but what is happening in our country we have very high rates of unemployment in our country right because the young population is not been utilized properly they don't have the sufficient skills you know in order to be suitable for certain jobs they are not been trained properly we are lacking in all these aspects that is why we are not able to harness this efficient uh, you know young population so now if you see guys in your introduction again to prove this particular statement you can give some statistics so that you'll be able to you know show the strength of india's demographic dividend okay 65 percentage of population will be 35 years of age and 68 will be you know in the working age group that is 15 uh, that is 18 to 59 years by the year 2020 i'm talking with respect to india okay and now this is referred to as what guys your demographic dividend and that can literally be reaped to improve the country's growth as well as the per capita income of majority of the indians so now having such a you know huge uh, young population we are not having you know the uh, sufficient skill development programs to harness the skill of these people so now the skill development to harness demographic dividend that can be next heading and we are going to mention what can be done for this so now while the demographic dividend guys when that is a boon at sometimes this blessing can turn to be a curse also that is it can turn to a bane also with millions of youth unemployed if you see the skill india program guys that uh, was launched in the year 2015 with a separate skill development ministry for its implementation why in order to train or give skill to certain youth people so that they'll fall under the category of employment and now what is the aim of this skill india program guys why did the government launch it you can even mention about that particular point in your answer so now the aim of this skill india program is to skill 
upskill and reskill for 400 million youth guys which would provide a pool of trained youth even for your making making in india program so now through this program even your making in india program is getting supplemented right because you are getting a lot of young people who are getting trained as a result of which they come up uh, you know with a lot of self employment opportunities as a result of which again your country is getting benefited you are able to harness or make use of your you know uh, demographic dividend in the best possible way Another point uh, which you need to mention with reference to skill, uh, you know, development and to harness uh, this particular population is, okay, we know that the government has launched the skill development program, but it's a very big exercise to, you know, skill the 400 million young youth. You, do you think it's a normal thing? No, it's a huge task. So now the government realizes that it's such a mammoth or a very big exercise and it will definitely require the participation of private entities. So now private participation should be encouraged and hence, the government and the private they created the national skill qualification framework where the private entities they can be uh, sign up to be training partners through approved training centers that is guys what will the government do is they'll uh, come up with uh, certain private entities uh, for training these young youth they'll sign up in certain contract and then through approved training centers these private entities they'll provide trainings to uh, using certain experts to all these young people as a result of which they'll be getting training from so specialized people whereby the efficiency of these young population who are uh, sitting for the training will be more enhanced whereby we are able to increase the skill and development of the people again the demographic dividend is harnessed in the best possible way that is yet take another important way guys and now this skill development program guys that is again aimed at realizing uh, the potential of young population that you can include in conclusion so before that let me tell you some important points also See, why, if you are not able to make use of, uh, you know, this demographic uh, dividend in the best possible way, definitely it is a big loss to our country as a whole. Because as I told you initially in the introduction also, in 2022, by even by 2022 and uh, 20 also, India is supposed to stand number one with reference to the young population it has. And that is the sole reason, guys, why uh, countries like Japan do come to our uh, country. Because we have a very young population compared to the, uh, the us, right? So they want to, you know, capture the young population because we are very efficient in doing that. So now, what we need to do is that make sure that this demographic dividend is harnessed or utilized in the best possible way. Unless and until we do that, guys, we cannot, you know, think of development because uh, the problem of unemployment still exists. You can mention all these points in this particular question, but the main focus should be on how can the demographic dividend be effectively or efficiently harnessed through skill development. For that, the skill development program, you can mention about that and what is the aim of that. And as I told you, and then you can also talk about, you know, through this program, uh, you know, how far it is reaching the rural areas as well as the urban areas. More focus should be on rural areas also, guys, because we know that a lot of young population, okay, they are, they are being unemployed. The rural youths are being unemployed. So, again, more of skills to the rural uh, people, both the male and the female. You know, that will definitely benefit the uh, population because through the skill program, irrespective of the gender, even women are getting trained. As a result of which, women is becoming independent. Again, an empowerment of women is taking place. Even that point you can include in this, guys. Okay, so thus, at the end of the uh, day, you can conclude the answer as the skill development program is nothing but it's aimed at realizing the real potentials of the young population of our country. And thus, the government as well as the private enterprises, guys, they have to ensure that this program, which has been initiated, has to be adequately funded because for training these people you need huge amount of funds so then we know that the government is lacking in all these you know with respect to funds and all to carry out these expenditures that is the reason they resort to the help of private entities so now they should make sure that the, the funds are also with reference to funds also it is properly funded whereby the program result in a success thus we are able to harness the demographic dividend of our country in the best possible way so this is how you can wind up this answer guys the next question is the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act now faces a triple correlated crisis that is a lack of sufficient fund, rampant payment delays and also abysmal wage rates. Now examine the above statement. So now we are going to examine the above statement with reference to your Manrega or MG Narega based on the triple correlated crisis. So in this particular answer, we are going to see what are the challenges that this particular scheme, that's your Manrega or your MG Narega, faces. That will be the focus of uh, discussion with, ref with reference to this particular question. Okay. So to begin with, you can mention about your uh, Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act in one line. So now we know that this particular program, guys, yeah, we know that uh, this particular program, guys, that is the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act, 
is an Employment Guarantee Act which was introduced in the year 2005. That is through the National Rural Employment Guarantee Act of 2005. And what was the aim? With an aim to enhance the livelihood security of the households in rural areas of India. To put in simple terms, to make sure that more of employment opportunities is uh, there for people in the rural areas so that they'll have a better standard of living. More focus was given especially on the rural areas. Okay. And now, in spite of this, a lot of challenges, guys, this particular scheme is facing. So in this particular question, we are going to discuss about those challenges uh, which has been faced by the Mandrega or MG Narega. So the MG Narega is suffering from various challenges like the point number one talks about insufficient budget allocation. That is very true. And that is what we can see every year also, right? So now, there is an increase, you know, in a nominal budget. But what about the actual budget, guys, that is after adjusting inflation? I hope you know what is nominal and actual. So now, when it is up, uh, on your actual budget, what happens? It has literally decreased over the years. The allocation of funds for this particular scheme. That is what we are talking here, right? But although the allocated amount is, say, like 55,000 crore, the actual value of budget allocation for the current year, that is 2018-19, it is much lower than that of 2010-11. Which literally means that the allocation of funds, though they say, okay, so and so fund, uh, I mean, amount will be allocated for this particular scheme also, it is not literally, you know, getting approved or literally not reaching the scheme. Again, what happens when this is a condition? Definitely, it will affect the scheme to a greater extent. Whatever activities this particular program or scheme is supposed to do, it will get delayed because funds are very essential to carry out the programs, right? That will have a problem. So, that is yet again one of the most important challenges of Mandrega or MGNR Rega. Okay. Fine. Next point is shift to supply driven program. We are going to see in this particular point how did the, you know, uh, Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act has literally uh, been a supply driven program. That is, see, the state submits the labor budget, guys, to the center. And now, a labor budget literally it contains what? Anticipated labor demand for the next financial year. And now, the center through the arbitrary approved labor budget, okay that has reduced the number of days of work and it puts a cap on funds through your national electronic fund management system. So in this case, what happens? There is some sort of, you know, problem in this, right? So, according again to the NEFM FMS guidelines, the states will not be allowed to generate employment above the limits which are agreed by the approved labor budget. And when that is the situation, automatically this particular uh, Mandrega has made the program, uh, that this particular thing has made this Mandrega program supply driven. Because they are not able to literally satisfy what the program literally talks about. Due to all these, you know, labor, uh, labor budget uh, reforms and uh, etc. What happens? You're facing trouble in that, right? You're facing a lot of issues in that. So this is one of the problem, guys, which is faced by the engineer Rega. Okay. Moving on to the next point, we have poor wages rate. Very true. See, why was this particular engineer Rega started, guys? In order to ensure that the people are provided at least a minimum wage rate so that they'll be able to maintain a decent standard of living, so that they'll be able to come up from the poverty. They'll be able to, you know, lead a life in which at least they'll be able to have the basic necessities of life. But in this particular scheme, though all these are the objectives, in reality, what is happening? There is a poor wage rate. Let us see how it is. See, there is a stagnation of wage rate due to declining MGNREGA wage rates from Minimum Wages Act of 1948. And this MGNREGA wages, guys, in fact, they are much lower than your minimum wages in most of the states. This is a reality, okay? In that case, again, what happens, guys? Your uh, income to people does not increase. It still remains low. When that remains low, the purchasing power of people decreases. Then what happens again? Your standard of living decreases. At the end of the day, they are put up in the trap of poverty. So will they develop? No. Again, uh, though they are employed also, you can call them in a situation of unemployed guys. That is what the situation becomes, right? This is yet again another important challenge or difficulty of your MGNA Reka. Fine. And that, that's what happens. This could literally push the marginalized section to take up vulnerable and hazardous job. That is very true. When you don't have any other go, when you're paid very low, what happens? Sometimes they may continue. At the, at the other times, they'll go up to take certain jobs, which is very dangerous for their health sometimes, or it will even prove them very vulnerable. Okay. So this is yet take another important challenge of your engineer Rega. Moving on to the next point, we have delay in wage payments. Oh, this is yet again another important uh, challenge, guys. That is, if you see the statistics, the delayed payment, that is with reference to your wage payment, it increased from 39% in the year 2012-13 to 73% in the year 2014-15. And in the current financial year, what happens? 
25% of fund transfer orders that is FTOs pertaining to your wage payment from January to uh, April that is pending to be processed by the center. When this is the situation, again what happens, you can connect this with your previous point, what I have uh, discussed. Again, a lot of problem for the people, they are not getting any source of income. Though they are supposed to get money for what they have done, the work they have done, again they are not paid anything as a result of this deficiency reduces. See when somebody is not paying you money for the work that you have done, automatically when it keeps on getting postponed, what happens to the efficiency or uh, what happens to efficiency in the coming works, it reduces, right? The same thing happens here also. Those people definitely, they will, their efficiency will reduce, they will have no incentive to work. At the end of the day, they again still remain in poverty. That is what literally happens, right? So as a result of this, on the whole, I can tell you that the Manrega or MC Narega has not benefited the targeted uh, group in the ex most expected way, I could tell you. Though they have literally come up with so many things which will benefit the people, in practicality what we are seeing guys, more than the benefits, we could, could see a lot of drawbacks and that is be, uh, that is what is you know literally leading to poverty, I could say. That is what is literally leading to unemployment in rural areas, I could say. Because this particular program was basically for uh, you know making sure that more people are employed. But what is happening? All these things are literally, you know, a situation where uh, it leads the pe uh, people to in a situation of poverty, in a situation of unemployment, in a situation of a low or, a, you know, very bad standard of living, ultimately affecting your economic growth. Thus, you can conclude your answer by writing, uh, you know, certain solutions, guys. So, in the next slide, uh, that you can uh, make sure that when you conclude it, uh, put certain solutions. What can you do to improve this particular program? What can be done? We know that the uh, the first point any when it comes to any one of our mind is like to make sure that the policies are uh, this implemented properly, to make sure that it's thoroughly checked and all. Very true. But apart from that also, you need to focus, make very particular of make a special focus on each and every area so that you will be able to overcome the challenge in a better way. That is, a decade after the implementation of uh, MG Narega, the program is in need of serious attention. We know that, very true, because of the drawbacks that we have discussed. And now, it needs to urgently establish an independent social audit and draft rules. Why, guys? For a better transparency and also for grievance uh, redressal. Thereby, it should also activate its rules for payment of unemployment allowance and compensation for delayed payment. If certain things are taken into consideration in a much better way, definitely you will be able to you know, overcome at least uh, not, if not the full, at least to a certain extent, the challenges or issues uh, which we are facing with MG Narega program. Okay. Thus, it also needs to take action on complaints. Then, impose fines on officials and functionaries who are violating this act. That is very, very important, guys, because for any of this act or program to get delayed, one of the major reasons or causes this, you know, uh, violating the you know functions of uh, violating the rules and regulations of that particular uh, you know a program or act according to the whims and fancies of the officials or officers. So strict action should be taken on them for doing that. Actually, a thorough monitoring should be done whether this particular scheme or program is being carried out in a proper way. That should also be done, guys. And thus, another important point is you should fill the larger vacancies of this Mgenerega functionaries and thereby strengthen the monitoring of the program and not I, I will never tell you just to strengthen a strict and a thorough reviewing should also be done we say like a weekly reviewing or a, you know the thrice and I mean a weekly reviewing or a, you know a monthly reviewing that should definitely be there because since we are not able to do all this only we are facing all these challenges with reference to this particular Mgenerega so with this you can conclude your answer and I hope you've clearly understood uh, regarding the challenges which is faced by this particular program and how to put the challenges in a structured way and thereby while concluding guys one thing what you need to remember is please make sure that you are providing certain solutions apart from this also you can add up your own solutions to make the answer you know in a, in a better way you can add up no problem so with this we have come to the uh, end of this uh, particular uh, session and I hope you've clearly understood all the questions that we have discussed here so stay tuned for more upcoming videos. So thank you.